up, everybody? We are live. Welcome to Overdose 4, your weekly overdose of entertainment. Take it away, Sean. Of course, I am Sean Shank, the gangster of love. Then we have uh, Latuzek, Puffalumps, and Wizzle. Wizzles. Wizzles. Special guest today, Gilman, who hydrates with Bud Light. And of course, we have uh, Mr. Surf, Surf, Surf Dub. And we also have another special guest with the Yellow Bus, Tom Bomb. Right now, right now they are currently taping up their hands for our 40 Ounce for Life tribute to Edward Forty Hands. So who wants to explain Edward Forty Hands for our viewers who don't know or have never done Edward's Forty Hands? Yeah, because I consider myself a fairly... Uh... You know, a, a fairly astute drinker uh, and had never heard of this. <laughs> so <laughs> it must be know. one of those newfangled things these kids are doing well, I'm nowadays. Older now. I don't get out as much anymore, so this isn't the type of shit they do at the bar. Uh, the two times I go a year, so you know. uh, I've played a couple times in my day. I, I can explain it. Take it away. Beer pong with it. Forty hands beer pong. That'd be rough. So basically, you take your two forties. You know, Mickey's uh, Steel Reserve, Old English, some something good. You duct tape them to both your hands, so you can't, you can't, you're not allowed to pee till you're done with both. You have to keep them taped to your hands for the whole time you're drinking. Um, rules I've played, you're allowed to have someone help you pee if they finish before you. Uh, so that's going to be kind of hard. hard here. I don't, know, I don't know if that's a common rule, but... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure my wife will appreciate that one. So, you know, you know yeah, what? Yeah. Tom are going cool. balls to the wall, man, with the taping and everything this week. Ra race to finish your 40s. Whoever finishes first wins. All right, well, if everyone's ready, should we all, should we all take our first drink, and then we'll race to 40? Let me pop my shit open. So what's everybody got? Let's start with the left. Why don't, let's choose it. Why don't you start? I just went with some Bud Light. Uh, I was going to go with a little oh, Mickey's, no. um, you know, going back to the days of drinking the grenades and everything, but uh, I decided against it, so I have to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> so Bud Light for Latuza. Gilman, what'd you grab? Two Mickey's. Mm -mm -mm. Dude, straight thug style. Let's hear it from fucking Gilman. That's Tupac style. Tupac style, baby. I went with, of course, the... Uh... Miller Lite. After running around everywhere to get something, I wasn't going to do the malt liquor. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sean went to like five stores for... I really did. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, is fun. drinking 40s out of like a paper bag just like not a cool thing to do anymore for like hobos, bums, and, like street thugs <laughs> because, you know... <laughs> I always assumed had... in those brown bags it was like fifths of, of like vodka or well, something. Well, that, that could be too, but I'm just saying though, you know, it's, uh, everybody seemed to have some moderate difficulty mm -hmm. obtaining their... Their beverages I was surprised because I always see them like unwanted too. I'm always like, why are you taking up so much beer space with these fucking useless forties? But uh, but today uh, I found them on my first shot because I'm uh, I'm not stupid. Uh, I got uh, Miller High Life rocking the uh, old school Just campaign of beers. That's right. Uh, that's almost a punishment in and of itself. Oof. Yeah, sometimes I like to punish myself a little bit. As uh, as do Tim and Tom. What did you guys get? Okay. Thing of Mickey's on the right. Steel Reserve, on the left hand. Ouch. And I have a Mickey's over here. Sure. And I won my coin toss, so I got an Old English. <laughs> ah, the low E. Uh, all right. All right, well, uh, let's drink up, guys. Uh, whoever wins this gets some sort of arbitrary prize. Why don't uh, we'll have our, our viewers decide what the uh, prize should be. If you How about no matter who wins it, we go to Gilman's house next week to uh, enjoy his kegerator. Mm. You're, wel you're welcome whenever you want, man. I think that's a fair, uh, fair deal. I can Dude. bring all kinds of things. Okay, I worked at, Be at Best Buy, Best Guys, for a little bit, and every day I salivated over the kegerator. Um, and I just want to know... Gilman, what's it like to live with a kegerator? It you surprisingly get sick of beers. Surprisingly. Really? Yeah. If you're drinking uh, a keg beer every day, instead of drinking, instead of drinking a glass of milk or a glass of water, you go down and grab a beer out of the keg. <laughs> Start to get sick of it. No, man. When, when you get a keg, the only reason that I've held off on getting it is it, now that I don't drink as much anymore. When you got a keg, that's whatever, a couple hundred beers. It, now, does that thing? I mean, you got to drink that in a fairly short amount of time before it gets uh, gets kind of skunky, or is it does it stay good as long as you got it? You know, is it good for a month or two, or what? Yeah, well, since it stays cold, it's pretty much good. I mean, we've had this okay. one for 
since uh, I think October actually. Oh wow! Mm, it still tastes fine. Drank oh, a bunch nice. of it last week. No I shit, dude. Out. That would last in my house about twelve minutes, one night. I figured it, it's a, I figured it's an investment because in the long run, instead of buying cases of beer, I always I just have the keg. Yeah, I almost bought that when I was working at a, a previous employer. Um, we were going out of business and. It was down like 90%. And they're like, dude, you should buy it. You're an alcoholic. And, and that was it. <laughs> Great. Enable me. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, destroy your liver. Kill yourself. We hate you anyways. Don't give me a, a leaflet or a, a flyer to a 12-step program. No, encourage me to buy a kegerator. Don't, interve- don't have an intervention. Just fucking pour more liquor down. Have it taped, taped to the front of your kegerator. Just to remind you that you're beating alcoholism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you beating can put it in your trunk and drink alcoholism. while you drive. <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Wonderful. Big gulps. Uh, All right. Where are we at? Let's get with the topics, huh, fellas? Yeah. Who do you guys want to start with? Lechuzuk, why don't you pick? Yeah, you know, Jim, why don't we jump onto the Halo topic? I mean, you're a big uh, gaming guy. What do you think about the move from Bungie to, what is it, 343? I, uh, personally, I have nothing but good things to say about it. I was a little skeptical at first, um... You know, obviously played Halo since its inception, you know, whatever, 10, 11 years ago, and um, was pretty let down when 3 came out uh, back in 2007, 2008. Um, I felt like they just kind of half-assed it. And then shortly after that, I was reading things about uh, Bungie wanting to be separate from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft fought them in court for a while, and I guess eventually they said, all right, listen, you can go and be your own entity. But we retain the rights to the Halo franchise because you created it on our watch type of thing. So uh, the cool thing was, though, is that they went and transitioned out in, a, in a, I think, a, a real nice way. You know, they, they did uh, the Halo Reach game that came out two or three years ago, uh, handled the multiplayer and all the map packs that came out for that. And then uh, a lot of the people that they that are at 343 Studios, I think like 40 or 50 percent of them were actually former employees of Bungie. Um, so, I mean, you could tell, at least I, I could, I, I thought when Halo 4 came out, I thought it was nice, there were some fresh things in there, it looked like, uh, you know, they kind of kept true to some of the old the old things that, that brought people in, but they tried to, re, you know, revamp the series a little bit too, you know, for the uh, next generation consoles uh, that are, you know, that are coming out, and uh, kind of to continue on with the story, so, so like I said, I, I've had nothing but, you know, but good thoughts, uh, i I've heard both sides of the story, you know, I, I are both, uh, both sides of the argument. You know, some people have complained that Halo 4 is now more like a Call of Duty type game. I was going to ask, what do you think, because they added the, sp- the sprint button was like a big m- innovation for Halo. I mean, I shouldn't say was, innovation, yeah. but it, it was It was, it was, it was, it was a huge big jump for them. Yeah, it absolutely was. And, and even just, you know, some of the way some of the battles were set up and everything else, a lot of people complained that the difficulty was, was so terrible in Halo 4 because of the new enemy type um, with the, the Prometheans oh, man, and the Knights and everything. God damn. But here's the thing, I mean, I mean, it wasn't everybody getting tired of fighting the flood? Okay, I was getting tired of the, the same flood. Thing. I hated, yeah. dude. I was so tired because it was just like and in every super game, zombies, one hit and you're fucking dead. You know. And think about it. In every game, Halo game, with the exception of Halo Reach, which was a prequel, you know, the first four or five chapters of the game, you're fighting the Covenant, and then you go and you fight the flood, and then you fight the flood and the Covenant. I mean, it, I don't know. It was just it was kind of wearing thin. So, I mean, I, I kind of enjoyed them taking it in a new direction, and even though they're more difficult to. Uh, to fight, it's new challenge. You know, I mean, uh, the series is evolving. I guess I agree, and you're right. They have to take it somewhere else in order. I mean, because I think in general, though, here's my question: Do you guys think that the um, like a series loses its luster after a certain amount of titles? Because I think Sean mentioned this in one of the episodes that like a lot of these prequels and you know sequel games and shit are not even getting like half the numbers that. The, the the popular ones were that launched the series like uh, yeah, we talked about that last week yeah yeah so like my whole thing is with three four three taking over for four five and six I'm excited for the innovation but are we going to be completely burnt out on Master Chief or are we already I don't know you what know, you guys think I think part of it is that the generations that started with like Halo one and two are now older and they're you know we're in college graduate college working now and all the Younger kids got to start out on like three or four, which weren't as good as the originals, but they're still good. And then they had they had COD when they that came out. I mean, I played the original COD for PC. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I I have the disc somewhere around here. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude. No, that was Halo One was way better than the original COD, given 
CAD wasn't what it was now, of course. I've always been I, interested because I don't know what it was like. I, 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 I enjoyed Halo Anniversary too. Uh, oh yeah, and that was you know three four three studios that you know did the remake of it, and I, I thought they did a nice job with it as well. You know, it, it brought back that nostalgia, uh, but but it also you know by kind of upping the graphics and you know putting in the, the HD graphics and everything, I thought it really it was really nice. You know, and being able to switch between the graphics that was that fun. was cool. That was that a cool was feature. Neat, yeah. And we but, even played that a little bit uh, when you were over at my place uh, in 3D. Uh, they had the 3D. Oh, yeah, uh, dude, that was great. And it was actually pretty cool, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't play too much of it in 3D, but, uh, you know, I played a couple of levels. It was it was definitely neat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to say about this, multiplayer-wise, um, you know, Call of Duty 4 was really competitive. Call of Duty 5, World at War, was a lot of fun. They made it really gimmicky now to where... You know, you're just going for that kill streak, going for the scores, all that stuff now. I mean, Halo 2, when we played System Link at my place, and we had, like, our paper brackets, that was, like, the time of our lives. That was way better than any multiplayer. You know, Halo 2, when you could D-level, that was huge. I loved that. And then Halo 3 and on, you know, now it's just who can level and double experience if you buy Mountain Dew. It's just so gimmicky now. I, I can't wait until you can buy your, like, guns and levels and stuff and buy your prestiges. I don't like that, though. I don't like that whole, like, pay-to-play type thing because, especially, too, I guess, like, prestiging, I don't know, is, is one sort of thing. But, like, okay, let's say, like, if you make weapons for purchase, um, but the the there's weapons, like, DLC weapons for purchase that are better than what's standard in the game, well, the guy who's not going to buy those weapons is, like, automatically set up at a disadvantage because he won't pay the extra money. I don't, I don't think that... I don't think you should make people's success in the game hinge on whether or not they're going to buy your fuck your DLC. I think it's worth mentioning too. I, I read an article today, actually, um, by about by 2015 or 16, there is um, more than likely um, going to be legal transactions that you can actually do within games, not the microtransactions that you do now, paying Microsoft or Sony for a, an avatar outfit or a gun, but like I'm playing you in Madden. And it's, you know, fourth and two, and I'm down by three, and there's 10 seconds left, and I can bet you $10 in real money through my PayPal account or however they rig it, like, that I'm going to make the play and win. And uh, I guess there's a bunch of bills that are getting pushed through now for, you know, the legalization of it. And, and you know that EA and Activision, they're all going to jump right on top of that, because they're going to take a cut of whatever, you know, whatever it is that, that's transmitted, you know, money-wise. Dude, what, imagine uh, how much... I'm sorry, go ahead, Tim. Well, I was going to say, that's what... Um, if you guys, you know, Gilman, I think you, you, I mean, you're familiar with Blizzard games. Uh, if you, if you do Diablo three, they have the real money auction, which they push like fucking crazy, and Blizzard takes a cut of every transaction. If you see, they take like ten, twenty percent of everything. This yeah. is real money. It's pure profit for but them. But it's, now. it's optional for the users to use it. Yeah, but the users who use it are the users who suck. The ones who it's pay to play. That's basically what it is, right? No, it's not pay to play. It just you can sell your items for real money or for get in game money. So it's pay to have more fun play. Yeah. But what I'm asking though is the industry moving towards uh, something where it's it's essentially going to become pay to play. You well, know, yes. like what, with what Jim's talking about. I, I think it's more moving towards you release a game with DLC that's already done. But they'll wait like a month or two, and they'll release part of that DLC, and then more DLC, and you gotta pay, you know, fifteen bucks to get the full, the full game. Yeah, half the time now, the DLC, the the first piece or two, is already on the damn disc, and all yeah. you're buying for your ten or fifteen dollars is the unlock key for it, you know. Uh, and I don't like that because, in my opinion. Listen, if you're going to put a good game out there, a good product, and then you're going to support it afterwards, I, I'm absolutely going to support that. You know, there's been some DLC that's been great, some of it's just been just, you know, polished turds. And uh, ultimately, you know, if you put a good product out there, people are going to support it. But if you take a full game and then you go and say cut back 10 or 20 percent because the executives say, what can we cut out of this and then sell back to people later? People are, you know, like I said, 
bucks, and I don't think anybody's happy about that, you know. And you're feeling like you're not getting the full experience for the sixty dollars, you know. Why, why do I got to pay ten more a month later, and then twenty more, a month, you know, a couple of months later? It's it's bullshit. It really is. Well, and you're and you're right. The fact is that you know they're going to keep doing it as long as we keep paying, mm -hmm. you know. So where where and how do you begin to like to overturn that process? You know, like, how stand do you up for your process? right, fight for your right. Sean, God damn it! The company needs to come out and be a man about it and set the precedents back. Yeah, someone with big enough balls has to together. set the precedent. Or or make the the original game cost less if you're going to be paying for. True. Absolutely, absolutely. You want to charge me thirty or forty bucks for your base piece of shit, right. you know, a, a skeleton of a game that you went and pulled all the all the <laughs> stuff out of? That's fine, and then sell me pieces of it later if I feel like buying it. Most of the time, though, with the DLC, I buy a game, I play it. Uh, I'm done with the story. Six months later, I'm not interested in going and picking back up that game and then going and playing the hour or two of shitty content add-on that I should have got to begin with in there. I've moved on. You know what I mean? It's a, like you got to come back. you got to dive back into it. you got to remember the controller scheme again. you got to remember where yeah, you like the you story. Said. Where was your character? Do I want to go back and do that? If it's a co-op game, does my buddy still got that game or did he sell it? Did he game fly it? You know what I mean? Oh, totally. So. Well, because the other thing that you mentioned one time... Uh, and it made a lot of sense was that, like, when you're done with the game, you're sort of done with it. At least I am. Like, I try and go back to, like, shit. Like, the other night I was playing Borderlands 2 with, with Sean and, and uh, Tom. And it was fun because I was hanging out with my buddies. But I don't know. I, did, I just didn't really feel it. Like, I, I wasn't really interested in the game. I did my playthrough, and I'm done with it now. Joe, Joe, Joe did, uh, Surf didn't feel it until I started dropping head for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the head always, always puts me right, on, right back on track. Speaking of DLC, what's the, what's the new Far Cry Blood one you're talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you guys about that. Yeah, but that's you know the funny part about that is that that's not even DLC. You don't have to have the game. Um, it's that's kind like of a it's, standalone it, pack. You can it buy. is. It's a standalone package, and it's like totally eighties. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like some guy, some guy from you know the company that makes Far Cry. You know, like hey, we're done with the game. He went home. He got fucking he got fucking high over the weekend and came up with this idea. And it's like. Hey, I'm gonna present this to my boss as a joke, and it went on, and it flew on to a, a game. I watched the first uh, 20 minutes of gameplay, and it's like a total 80s game all the way down to the graphics. See, what, uh, uh, what I just assumed it was was <laughs> I thought they were just making up for the shitty DLC they released for Far Cry 3 because I played all through Far Cry 3, and then I got the DLC because it was it was really cheap. It was only I don't know, it was like eight or ten bucks or something, but it was like hunt three new animals, and and you have all these new missions, but it was like. It was like two missions and like you it's know a new type a, of plant you can tiger. harvest. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, okay, I already did that for like you know 30 hours in the game, so I'm good. But uh, so the DLC itself was kind of shitty, and then when I saw this Blood Dragon thing, I was like, oh fuck, it's just Far Cry, Cry Three and like Technicolor and like maybe like a half of a campaign's worth of a game. But it looks like it's a, it's a whole new thing. It is. It has nothing to do with the game. It has nothing to do with the people in the game. It's totally different. Dude, is it just me, or did that fucking come out of left field? I had no idea until I saw it on my homepage on Xbox. It uh, it did. It came out of nowhere, and uh, there was and there, there's a lot of companies all that are doing similar things that I just read about. Uh, it's a role playing game I played up from Capcom about a year, year and a half ago called Dragon's Dogma, and uh, they decided to release this. It's like a standalone DLC pack where if you haven't played the game before, that's fine because when you buy this game at a reduced price for 30 or 40 bucks, you get the original game that people played a year, year and a half ago. And then there's a whole other area that you can go to that's a separate island that you know delivers an extra 10, 12 hours of gameplay content. And which is kind of cool, but it's very similar to you know to it's it's not a DLC where you got to buy it and download it. Um, you know, it's it's a standalone thing that you can buy. And so I, I see companies doing that too now. You know, just hmm. kind of repackaging the same old shit. You know, maybe changing a few things around here or there, and then uh, you know reducing the price and hoping they can get you know half a million suckers to buy it. We're at an interesting time with game development, I think, because like just I don't know, like I, I found. It an article online from like game developers it was written in like 95 and they were talking about how how difficult the industry was you know you could be working on a game and then it gets shut down because funding it was always underfunded and like it was hard to find jobs and if you did find a job it was like like 80 90 hour weeks ridiculous like workloads and it would be shit like you know they needed testers to like turn on and off systems like in different sequences for 10 hours a day um, and now it's like the industry so big and it's 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 flourishing that like, and with the technology too, 
we 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 should be seeing some really really cool innovations, and and to some degree we are, but there's sort of this squabbling going on now over microtransactions and DLC, and I hope it just all fucking goes away. Like we need, I think DLC is good, but it has to truly be a meaningful value to the game. To be it, has to, yeah, it has to give me a reason to not only one pay more of my hard-earned money to play it, but two a reason to pop the disc back into there, you know, and and it fire it back up and you know, remember the control scheme and everything else and think back to where I was left in the story and those sort of things, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. that's just the way that things are going. Um, and as a matter of fact, I had uh, mentioned to you this, uh, this past weekend, uh, a good friend of mine used to actually work for uh, Red Storm Entertainment, which is uh, a division of Ubisoft. It's mm -hmm. Tom Clancy Studio that does the Ghost Recon, the Rainbow Six games, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, we can actually, we'll, we'll have him on maybe in a few weeks when, when we free up, uh, you know, a space for, for a guest and he can tell us maybe some some stories uh, because I've heard some you know that there were some pretty wild things uh, he worked there for a few years yeah that'd be great what do you what are you smirking about yellow bus <laughs> you guys circle oh. jerking under the table there no I saw the wampum guy in the back of Gilman's and then I yeah. started partying for a long time so I. Very <laughs> time. I would I would just like to point out that Gilman and I believe Tim I mean yellow bus have already finished one well one not quite, I got a little bit Dude, no shit. I fucking yeah. only got like that much gone. Well, I've only got like an eighth left, so. Yeah, I'm done with my first. Oh, what the oh, fuck? Fuck? The second one is uh, slow. I'm clearly the biggest vagina here. I gotta really hit this shit. Yeah, isn't it just regular beard? Oh. oh. You you even got the champagne of beers over there. Oh, that's right. So you gotta you gotta sip it slow. You gotta enjoy yeah, yeah. it. You know what, though? I, like, I haven't been drinking much recently. Uh, my wife and I started working out again a few weeks ago, and um, it's been a, an interesting process. But <laughs> no, but one thing that I can tell you is that you know, a lot of times beer just tastes wonderful after you've had a nice workout, you know, when we worked out uh, just a couple hours ago today. Drunk, so this, this, is, this is going down easy. You know so, I mean? Sometimes just, beer and cupcakes taste wonderful after a <laughs> workout. <laughs> In fact, after every workout, they taste. Hey, whatever. Good. Listen, yeah, I said I was working out. I didn't say I was thin. You know, uh, nothing so. better than a blizzard and a blizzard cake after a good workout. <laughs> you get drunker faster after a workout. I've noticed. Yeah, I bet, dude. Funny. Your body's fucking all depleted of all of its natural. I shit. actually, I tried hot yoga last week. How was that? They they knock up the temperature to ninety four degrees and they make you do yoga. Oh, and it was That's it was bad. nuts. I had no idea yoga was that hard. Dude, did your face start tingling and shit? I was you know, the yoga mat was basically just a sponge for my sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I had a buddy actually. His name is Matt too. That was like, man, I sat right by the door because I don't know if I was gonna like it. And they told me that if you leave, you can't come back because it like disturbs the temperature and the class and shit. He was like, I almost passed out, man. My face went numb. <laughs> like all this shit. I was like, I believe it, dude, because I, I used to do yoga in the sauna at my old apartment. Like, I would just go in there and, like, start doing some yoga and shit, and it gets fucking intense. Yeah, yeah it's nuts. Yeah, no shit. Okay, so I saw this uh, going around online. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen it, too. Uh, what, what do you guys think about CISPA, C-I-S-P-A? What does it stand for? The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. You guys heard of this? Yeah, it's the whole thing with Internet, uh, what is it called? Uh, censoring, piracy, censoring, yeah, of, censoring, of, censoring of the internet. So, how okay. how this is different from SOPA? Do you guys remember SOPA or whatever that was? Yes. That got knocked down. SOPA was essentially trying to um, make businesses um, responsible for reporting information to the government or something. Uh. Um, and the reason that was a a problem is that companies don't operate out of public interest, they operate out of personal interest, so how can you trust a corporation to be giving your information to the government? And now I think CISPA is dealing with um, with social media directly um, obtaining information through the government. So uh, I don't know. I watched a Woody's Gamer Tag video and he made a good observation that like, it, it, in terms of like traditional forms of communication, like our, our mail, our... Um, Let's just take the mail, for instance. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. Let's take the, let's take the mail, for instance. Like the the government doesn't have any right to just start going through your mail, right? But uh, we're finding with like our internet rights and our online uses, which are almost more important nowadays. It's just like throwing caution to the wind. Like we don't give a shit. We're gonna we're gonna look at what we need to look at whenever we want to. And so I don't know. That's the difference between the two, from what I understand. <laughs> Uh, hey, Surf, um, you're the only one who's only a 
quarter of the way done with your first four days. I told you guys. I told you guys I'd be like the last. I did finish my first. I was surprised to get smoked by so many other people. He was busy changing his pads. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going into the shit with, like, intent. Hey, Joe, why don't you take more Midol? Jesus Christ. Yeah, Midol for cramps. I was drunk already. I'm tipsy. <laughs> A little bit tipsy. Um, so, yeah, CISPA. <sighs> Fuck CISPA. Like, I don't know how it's going to... So, like, so they can see us watching porn. I don't get it. It basically lames out internet. Seriously, yeah. any, everybody can see me watching porn. I leave my windows open and everything. Who cares? <laughs> hey, I just leave my webcam on. Come on. Who the fuck cares? I'm pointing at the TV. Who cares? Chat no, roulette. Cispa, yeah, chat roulette. Start there. Like, deal with that shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, dick every three minutes? What? Mm. I drank like a liter of coffee before this too. Oh, yeah, I, was, sure you did. I was all tired. Uh -huh. I did. I was tired. Like a okay, liter. Okay, so does anyone have a liter of cola? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> For Favra? <laughs> uh, me and Tom worked out, had a prompt protein shake after the workout, and then immediately started drinking 40s. Well, you guys, you guys will be puking real soon. Worst protein farts ever. <laughs> I want to die right now. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie dog. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, 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 Charlie. <laughs> just sitting back there in the background. <laughs> With that he's, like, stare. You know, he's, he's, he's like sitting there like, you fucking alcoholic loser. <laughs> Charlie is, judges you. You still got see those thing. white eyebrows and shit. <laughs> 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 Looks like he's licking your back. Uh, I've got a... It's like, if I could just position it right, so it looks like I have a little dog on my shoulder. <laughs> now he's gone. He's like, fuck you, sir. It's so weird. Like, I feel like I don't have any kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was a good idea. Mm. So whose idea was the 40 Edward 40 hands again? I think Tim brought it up last week, and then I, I was curious as to what it was, so I asked about it. And then, yeah, uh, well, when, curi time. when curiosity kills a cat tomorrow morning, Latuzak, you'll remember it. Uh, story time, story time. What does it even mean? Um, Tell a story. Uh, well, okay, let's make a tradition. If you have a story that like springs up and it's completely relevant, but you kind of have to interrupt, you yell story time. But right. okay, so... So Are we have Dewey's Playhouse now. Wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, that's more Mario. Uh, so what happened was I forgot what the occasion was, but we went over to Northern Illinois University, and people were like, "Oh, let's play Ever Forty Hands there." I'm like, "Oh, that sounds like a great idea." And people were like, "Oh, let's get beer pong there." And I was like, "That's a great idea." So, uh, um, what happened was is. I, I, you know, if, if anyone knows me, I double book, and I'm trying to teach Tom how to double book, and I'm teaching him Narcissism 101, but, uh, you know, you double book, you know, you, you go and you hang out with someone and someone else, so I decided I'm going to do you know, 40 hands and beer pong. So, imagine this, and then playing beer pong, <laughs> I improvised, and then it, this is exactly what happened every single time, so... You, you had one where you're drinking, and then you put your your ball up here, and then you would almost like like mini golf. You would put it off, and it would launch the ball, and it could make. I okay, let's just say that we lost. <laughs> but I made about four 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 cups during that game, and there's probably six cups made. I and it was it was a fun time. No, that's but, uh, not that's not a bad average for that technique, man. I, I fucking with both hands sober don't. I usually don't make four cups in a game. But I let me get the proof of purchase. So you guys continue going. I'll I'll get the picture real quick. <laughs> with my strong hand. <laughs> with my strong hand. Uh, wow. Oh shit. You just highlighted the whole. Mercedes. I left for a minute to go grab my uh, second forty. What? Uh, where were we at? Were we? What 
uh, you know, we were we yellow buses to tell the story. Uh, we, well, before that, we were trying to talk about CISPA, but nobody had anything to say about it, so I don't know if we're switching. Well, you know, it's like it's it's just a, they they change the name of the law and they move it. You know, I know it was a huge thing, like what about a year ago when they were trying to pass it. Every website you go to, it's like no, blah blah blah, and all of a sudden, you know, they change the name and it gets approved by what Congress or the House or wherever it needs to get passed. Uh, just like everything, you know, it's big at the beginning, and then I think we all agreed that it sucked. It does suck, yeah. <laughs> I think we did. Oh, look, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> there's a good sum up there. <laughs> it's a good way to sum it up. But yeah, um, shit. Like it's it's um, a lot of people are speculating too. It's really convenient timing that all this shit went into uh, the Senate and the House. Like when everyone was distracted by what's going on in Boston and yeah, I read that too. Yeah, it always makes you wonder. I mean, people always say conspiracy theorists, but like, I don't know. Like, there are, uh, there are just conspiracies, you know. They're nuking us wrong. <laughs> I'm so focused right now. You're not focused. You. I'm so focused. Where's your, where's your video camera? It's just a picture of uh, of Tim. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a screen share. I'm about to show you the picture of, uh, it's a proof of purchase of our... Uh, <laughs> Both of them are hammered over there. <laughs> so it's almost better that they have the picture up right now. Because <laughs> if, if you can hear them in the background, they're just rambling on about everything. <laughs> well, while you guys are circle jerking over there, um, uh, oh. Sean, you brought up something about Michael Jordan. What was that about? Uh, Michael Jordan. When we go back to uh, you know the playoffs years and years and years ago, back when they were playing Utah um, in the in Game Five of 1997, uh, when they were playing Utah and they were down, uh, big things came out from his trainer saying they believe that uh, Michael Jordan was poisoned instead of him having the flu like originally believed. Um, and it's funny because Michael Jordan ended up having one of his career games where he hit all these three-pointers, and it ended up pushing the Bulls, I believe, up uh, three games to three and sending the game back, game seven back to Chicago where the Bulls end up winning the championship. So it was. Uh, it's kind of funny that this comes out, you know, 16 years later. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a huge Bulls fan, and uh, which is kind of interesting to, uh, to see. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you know, played through it and scored 38 points to lead the Bulls to a 90-88 victory and a 3-2 to series lead. <laughs> What's going on over there? Fucking <laughs> 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 fights breaking out. Random lightsaber fight? What the hell? Yeah, sorry. Tim, is that you? What the hell is that? <laughs> Tim, with his big-ass nose. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on over there. <laughs> Maybe forties was a bad idea this week. <laughs> I'll continue. Or a, a bad idea. idea. Or or a bad idea any week. So anyways, well, why, why uh, uh well, basically basically it was the best of seven series. The Bulls were uh, it was tied two to two and uh you know it was late at night and Michael Jordan was hungry and they ordered from a local pizza place uh where they were staying at Park City, Utah. And uh it is. At about nine o'clock at night, and about two o'clock in the morning, Jordan was the only one that ate the pizza, and he called. You know, he was all buckled over, okay. uh, saying he's got food poisoning, and uh, they honestly believe now that uh, he was uh, he was poisoned, so that hopefully Utah would uh, go ahead and win the game. But Michael Jordan went ahead to uh, score thirty-eight points and lead the Bulls to a ninety to eighty-eight victory and a three-two series game. lead. He only he only had thirty-eight points in that game. God, yeah. man, I remember that like it was yesterday. It seemed like he, it seemed like he threw up fifty. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean it, that game because he was hitting, he was hitting everything that game. They didn't even think he was going to play. You know, I remember him and like everybody kept saying that, that if Utah won that game, everybody said that you know that it was over. You know that Stockton and Malone were going to get you know get their first championship rings together and this and that, man. And then he winds up coming out there and I mean just sweating buckets before they're even starting. You know, and I, I remember that game. You know what I mean? It puts up what you said, thirty eight. You said thirty eight. Points. I mean, it seems like it was a lot more. I mean, it was like he was hitting everything. Like, you know, he couldn't miss. Well, thirty-eight yeah. points is a still fucking high-scoring game. Yeah, well, that's huge. And then, you know, the Bulls—they did only win by two points, but it ended up putting the Bulls up uh, three to two, and I think sending the game back to Chicago for uh, Game Six, where the Bulls yeah, where they winning. wrapped it up. Then yeah. so, I just uh, remember him like collapsing on Pippen, like at the end, and like giving him a hug, and like, and then just. Yeah, he had like a what, like a hundred and four fever or something like so that. Wait, but, uh, but why didn't he say he felt? He thought he was food poisoning at the time. Why did they just say it was a, a fever? If he knew at that time, he thought it was food poisoning. Well, they, I guess he got examined by the team physician. It just came off as, you know, they thought he had the flu, 
and now this comes out from a trainer, you know, 15, right. 16 years later. And you, we, you, ever, you ever know? No, we're never going to know. But, I mean, it's kind of cool if you really think that, you know, someone in Utah tried to poison Michael Jordan and, you know, win the championship. You know, that's kind of cool. And it's Dude, still, what do you and fucking got to do to give someone food poison? Know, Aside from giving a bad food, what do you got to fucking do to make I don't know, shit? rub your cock in their pizza? Well, I, I don't know, but the funny part is, is boy, did that one backfire. You know, oh I mean, my if, god, if it is true. I mean, seriously, it's like wow. You, you it's like you do anything short of shooting the guy in the face. You know what I mean? Could not stop him. You know? right. <laughs> so. And think about it. Think about the guy. Let's say it really did happen, and this guy at the pizza place, like, oh, we're gonna deliver to Michael Jordan. Let's let's you know try to give him food poisoning, and then they put a, a ton of money on a game. Oh uh, yeah. That's probably what happened is someone put a big bet on the game. Yeah. You know, Utah's gonna win the game, or Utah's gonna win the series. And then fucking Jordan comes out like a fucking bat out of hell, and, you know, slamming all these three pointers. Looks like he's fucking been through a ringer and fucking just embarrasses the shit out of them. Oh god, that would be yeah. a great plot for a movie of like like a group of guys like similar to us that are probably all drinking at like a Domino's, and they <laughs> this opposing team is in town and same situation. They're called in. We know we're going to be delivering a pizza, and we try and sabotage it. And that the movie could be all about those consequences. <laughs> Fuck Tim. <laughs> oh, Tim, you were such a douche. Uh, still lit. That, that, was, that was during the, the beer pong slash 40 ounce challenge, old English only. Are you dressed like Mario, or is that just your regular fucking getup? As you get up. He thought it was cool. <clears throat> Dude, I'm still, I still got a third left. Don't worry. I think John Casper went down on both of those girls. Actually, yes. But... <laughs> yeah, Gilman, look at him. He's halfway done. He's halfway done with the second already. Oh, I need to catch up. Dude, that's crazy. Going no, you guys... you guys are fucking real champs. No, we're not real champs. <laughs> hey, guys, we were just talking about that stuff with the the Boston Marathon and everything like that, and I was just mm -hmm. looking at a text from a, a viewer that we have, a oh. buddy of mine that's on it, and he said uh, to read a conspiracy blog that said the government did the Boston bombing and the fertilizing plant explosion to get the attention uh, off of CISPA. And actually, I had I have read a couple of things um, and seen you know pictures and everything else. And I know that nowadays anything can be doctored up, but ultimately some of those things uh, had come out. And it's kind of funny because whenever that stuff comes out on Facebook, Twitter, or anything else, all of a sudden that gets shut down real quick. And then you see news broadcasters talking about, no, 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 you can't trust that. You only trust what we put on the news. You know, <laughs> and it's you know. You know what's you know, really funny? Some of it's just, I mean, seriously, some of it just doesn't add up, you know? You know what's funny about this whole thing is, um, you know, we were talking about Jim being a conspiracy theory and, you know, all the bombs and, you know, we had the, the thing in Texas, we had the thing in Boston, and then um, I don't even want to know what the picture is Tim just had up, but um, <laughs> it goes back, <laughs> it goes right, back right. to um, Jericho, and that's what the whole plot of Jericho is, is... A conspiracy theory with the government and that they really, you know, have the, uh, you know, they really have to do with the bombs and that they have everything to do there. And it's uh, almost like what, know, we're, what we're living today. Well, the thing, the thing that always shocks me about people that are that vehemently deny that conspiracies exist and think that everything's a theory is that like history has proven not once but dozens of times the shady ass shit that America has done. So like I don't know why it's a big surprise to anyone that that type of stuff could still potentially happen. But uh, like w with the Boston the Boston stuff too, the other thing that people mentioned is that uh, um, for a long time people have said that the government knows that we're going to have an economic collapse. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of studies done on this, and I recommend for anyone who has Netflix to check out the movie called Collapse. Um, oh shit! It's really it's really fascinating. It really really is. But what they're basically anticipating, they say, is that a total economic collapse in which the population will plummet um, for a variety of reasons. But uh, they say that's why, like, Sandy Hook, the bombings, all this shit has to do with the government trying to take away guns to try and minimize the casualties during this collapse because they believe there's going to be a total revolution. And so what they said, the conspiracy they said that ties in to Boston is that these bombs were made out of, like, the gunpowder from ammunition that you can buy. So they're trying to really push that so they can make it illegal to buy ammunition in certain quantities. Um, so, you know, hey, look, at you can make bombs. That's, that's, what's, that's what the new idea is, is that uh, they're saying that's what the conspiracy is. And uh, my brother-in-law um, said that he watched a special about um, some people have done some undercover shit. 
and like in a lot of uh, government bases and like uh, and uh, I don't know uh, what what's the word I'm looking for like Fort Knox type places they're just filling the places with all these thousands and thousands of plastic coffins and so it's interesting I don't know what that's about but uh, I don't know I kind of uh, I'm on the fence about it I mean I absolutely believe a collapse could happen. Well, and the other thing too is, I mean, I absolutely believe that uh, what we're what we see on TV and what we're told is is you know obviously not what's going on behind the scenes. And I understand that some of it's probably kept from the public just to you know so you don't incite panic and uh, you know widespread panic and things like that. But ultimately. Um, you know, I mean, do it. Do I believe? You know, am I one of those people that you know believes in every conspiracy theory? Here is no, not at all. You know, but there's a lot of different evidence that supports you know many of the many of the different you know things that have gone on over the years. Um, you know, the government having knowledge or you know being involved in some way, shape, or form. And I mean, you know, if you think about it, sure. You know, I mean, keep, keep people scared and uh, you know keep people you know pacified. So, but. Uh, my friend uh, it was a, a Chad Messer, who's uh, who's on, who actually had, had sent me that about the uh, you know the Boston Marathon because I had I had read that as well because it was kind of funny when everybody's attention was turned to that and chasing down this this 19 year old kid, you know uh, the, you know Congress was uh, able to pass the the CISPA, you know so. I saw something today too about them saying that the kid that he's just. Uh... <laughs> that they've just planted that they've, they've planted it on him that they framed him that it's not that this kid has nothing to do with it and that uh, the bombings were done by the government but I mean I don't know you can start to get into some of that shit where they're really splitting hairs but like I said you know I'm along the same lines of you Jim is that like you just you know don't believe everything that you're told and and it's okay to approach approach everything with a degree of thought and not just accepting things you know people are sheep that's just what it comes down to people are fucking absolutely sheep and uh if you think about things twice, you know, a lot of shit doesn't add up. It is, uh, it is a common theme in our government. Well, think of it like this. Okay, a government is, uh, let's say, a group of people that make decisions for everyone else in the country, right? We elect them, it's electoral college, blah, 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 blah. I was high up in my fraternity. I was the vice president of the fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> like where this is going. Like small, Do we? Like a small nation, okay? I got to jerk off everybody. It was great. This has relevancy. <laughs> Circle jerk. <laughs> there was about 100 people, and they all, they all looked up to eight people that made the decisions. We had all this money. We had no idea what to do with it. We're all just dumb college kids, but we just made it seem like we're smart. And all we did, okay, so there are so many times where we're like, well, fuck, we fucked this up. How can we, like, cover this up and make it seem like it's someone's, you know, some other reason it occurred? Or how can we, like, you know, if we can't get this venue, how do we, you know, make it this venue instead and just make an excuse? There's so many different things that you can just bullshit. And that's just all the government is is they, they drunk college kids. Like if you ever in the house of art, <laughs> it's that's our future, it's damn it. <laughs> it's just a game. Like how could I fool idiots and make it seem like this was what we planned or like this is exactly what we expected? Like it's so stupid and trivial, but at the same time, it's just like, hey, look, this is what it is, and people are just like, wow, I believe them. But it's like at the same time, there's a hundred different agendas and a hundred different chess pieces being played in the background that no one even cares. Or yeah. even I mean, it, it, it's all about controlling the many with, uh, you know, from, from the views and, and the points of a few. I mean, that, that's what it is. I was going to say, you know? it, does it come down to, it comes down to whether you trust your government or you, I mean, not saying those conspiracy theories are legit, but is your government telling the complete truth or, I mean, obviously you're going to lie about some stuff. Because, I mean, honestly, if they said, like, we planned these bombings, it would cause riots. Oh, yeah, yeah, Not saying that's what happened. Oh, yeah. Just, they, they can't, certain information they can't release to the public because it would cause chaos. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure that there was some kind of reasoning behind whatever may or may not have happened. But uh, but ultimately, if you think about it, it's one of those things where, you know what, uh, where, you know, maybe we kill a few now to save millions down the road. And maybe that's their viewpoint on on certain things, and I absolutely believe that that's you know there. I mean, it's it's never going to come out and be admitted. You know what I mean? Even if they're caught right. in the act, 
it's always going to be, you know, I mean, they're, they're always going to find some way to discredit the source and, and everything else. But um, now in the age of everybody having a cell phone with a video camera and everything else, you know, there's, there, there's just, there's a lot of things out there that you see and you're like, wow. <laughs> you know I, I say, I say we somehow bring slick Willie Clinton back into office because shit was fucking great then. Yeah, who cares who you're fucking? Seriously. If the president's getting a blowjob and sticking his cigar up someone's ass, who cares? Hey, listen, <laughs> Seriously, I don't care, I'm as doing as it in my personal time. Why, who the hell cares what he's hey, doing? As long as the economy's rolling, brother, I don't care who's getting a Hummer from who. You know what I mean? You know, and so. I love I loved the part about when he had his speech for Obama, and they were like, you know, they're like, hey, Bill, how did you get the economy? Uh, you know, uh, why was the economy good? Why was it about the you know budget balance? And he said, one word, arithmetic. <laughs> no. I mean, seriously, just arithmetic. I mean, arithmetic, yeah. I think most people are delusional in that they think, though, that like any one president really makes a profound impact on what happens. Like thousands of people need to be moved in order for even the smallest decision to be made. And a lot of people don't believe that, but I think that's just the reality of what we deal with. And people have all like these over opinionated speculations on things like the economy when it's like most people don't even know how to manage their personal finances. And you're talking about the national budget. Like, come on. And, and I don't know. I guess that's my way of saying that most people in general are, are so undereducated that they should they should, they shouldn't have a right to have a fucking opinion. I guess, but uh, but yeah, that, that's the people are sheep thing, right? Because the majority are just will listen to what what they're told, and that's fine. But uh, you know, the select few who actually use their brains and think can actually figure uh, figure out that there's a lot more going on. So I don't know. I just feel like with shit like when it comes to the economy and stuff. A lot, half of it's happenstance. The other half is is uh, a mixture of tactics and you know random chance. You know. Second forty done. Oh. Uh, so wait, wait, is Gilman the official winner? He is the official uh, winner, and he is banned uh, from the show. He's <laughs> put it off the fucking island. <laughs> hey, celebration picture. <laughs> oh wait, let me click on that. What the hell is it? Is it? <laughs> it's a it's a nerd nerd and hose party. Two oh years ago. So you were a nerd and a hoe. <sighs> so just remember when the 2016 election comes. You look like Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Does he look like Mike, Joe? Mike who? My brother. Oh yeah, you do look like Mike there a little bit. All right. Anyway, congratulations, Matt Gilman. Congratulations, so what, Matt. What's his arbitrary prize? Myself out. He gets that with all over next week for more drinking. Dude, Matt, Matt came here with a fucking fire in his eyes, like a determination. Yeah, exactly. yeah he, he was. And he was hardcore. <laughs> by too. Take me really and yeah, he went. Breath. He went hardcore, man. He went with the fucking he legitimate fucking. Ghetto forty ounces. Yeah, I mean he didn't have in the he didn't have in the fucking bags, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Isn't you... <laughs> I just, hey, I, I just met him today, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew this guy Never who, who worked at a zoo. I was at a zoo one time, and I just wanted to take a little lick. And... <laughs> so this monkey is picking his ass, right? I got a boner. <laughs> and I, uh... <laughs> well, everybody else was feeding the giraffes crackers. I was checking under the hood. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one lick, I swear to God. <laughs> Uh, hey, I finally dude, finished my first one. Quite well. All right. Dude, yours is like fucking gasoline. How the fuck did you drink High Life? <laughs> dude, like, uh, okay, I, I hated uh, Ice House and shit so bad. What? Well, then why the hell did you give me Ice House every time I came and hung out with you, dude? <laughs> I never got Ice House, not once. I used to did. There was one time I came over and you're like, here, I got some Ice House. I used to get, I used to get Bud Ice. Oh, okay. Because like the liquor Bud store, ice. the liquor store must have bought like way too many crates of it, and it was on sale. For for like three years straight. Like I'm 12 kidding. cents. The 12 pack was, I don't know, it was like, like seven bucks or something for the bottles. Um, hey, maybe next less. week is um, who can drink a 40 ounce of Black Cobra the fastest? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an awful idea. 
Uh, yeah, that sounds fucking awful. Who came what? up with that idea? Let's do 40 ounce cough syrup special. Oh, very sick. We'll do sip and syrup. Okay, story time. Next week. Next week oh, sorry. Story yeah, time. That's right. That's right. Fucking, I'm enforcing the new rule. Okay, so here's my story. Sorry. Uh, we were talking about this earlier before the show started, but I, I knew this guy at uh, this job I worked at. His name was Reggie or something. I don't forget his name. We're but not he, supposed to use real names. He was whatever. <laughs> or something. Uh, or something. Or something, exactly. Or something. <laughs> yeah, just got a it gives you the option. It could be Reggie or it could be something. <clears throat> it could be all kinds of things. Um, but anyways, oh, no, he was a delivery uh, driver that delivered like patio sets and shit from the store. But every day <laughs> before work, he'd come in and spend like a half hour, no joke, like a half hour to 45 minutes in the bathroom. He's and it was always like right when there was like opening duties and shit going on, so he was never around. And then he'd go on some deliveries. He'd come back to the store, same thing, half hour, 45 minutes. I mean, like anywhere from like an hour to potentially like two hours a day he was spending in the bathroom. And it finally got to the point where uh, they actually, the store manager had to sit down with him. And it was like kind of embarrassing because they didn't have, uh, the, the offices were set up with just like these freestanding walls. So there was like no ceilings, like almost as Sean like what we had uh, where we worked. And so, of course, you can hear everything. So it was like the most awkward thing to be sitting there at the register while they're like, Reggie, we need to talk. And they like take him in the back and tell him he's like he's spending too much time in the bathroom. It was just so weird to hear them interrogate him about like, Are you, do, you have, do you have a medical problem? Like, is there a reason you need to be in there? Because like, how, how do you prod that, like, that issue without breaking some kind of law about people's privacy? Sometimes you need to rub one off, man. Sean, have you ever had an employee that spends too much time in the bathroom? No, from but me? I've had to have an, a talk with an employee because of a hygiene issue. Okay, tell. Please yeah, do no, tell. That just, just, just never fun. I mean, how do you sit down with someone who, who works hard and you know gives it 110 percent and tell them that they smell? I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, it's like, dude. I mean, your work ethic great. You're here all the time. Love you to death, but you stink like shit. Seriously. I didn't have that talk with my mom. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, seriously, I mean, how do you do it? It's, it's the most uncomfortable fucking situation when, you know, you're someone you respect because they do, you know, they'll do anything for you. It's you know, like, you know? legitimately, how did you break, how did you break that to them? How well, it, was, it, it, was, it was, it was, it was, it was taking like 10 positives and, you know, adding on a negative. It's like, you know, you do this, well, you... what the fuck? <laughs> you two drunk asses, would you like to share something? Oh my God. Here, replay, replay that clip. What is that? Oh my God. Oh, that's that old right, clip. Now, fellas, <laughs> that's you, <laughs> sir. There's Tom. Tom Bomb. Alright, one more time. I want to have that yak back. Nice and hard. I want to suck. No dick. Plus, baby, plus, I want to suck. No dick. Plus, baby, plus, I want to suck. No dick. Plus, baby, plus, I want to suck. Oh, all right. As much, as much fun as that was. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, I guess we won't be doing Edward Forty Hands anymore. Yes, <laughs> that's the end of that one. <laughs> sure rating, shut up. Gotta be able to handle your shit, man. Come on. Uh, you're like two kids. That's funny though. So, anyways, so what was your opening line telling someone that they smell? Like how? <laughs> well, it was like I was like, I mean, it's like you know, so and so. I we go, let's come to the office. It's like, hey, you know, you do this. You know, we appreciate everything you bring to the table. You do this well. You do that well. That well. We did have a couple complaints about your hygiene. And it was like, uh, you know. It's kind of like a deodorant issue, and it's like, what kind of deodorant are you using? It's just, it's like the most uncomfortable right. thing. It's like I don't care if I have to fire somebody, but to telling someone that that works hard for you that they fucking reek like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like the worst. What do they thing say? What do they say to you? Are you no, it's just that? like, and Alice, he's like, he's like, no, I, I have a problem. He's like, I use deodorant. He goes, I need something that's like special. He's like, I don't so understand like what's wrong. He's like. Commercial. Yeah, Tom had bad. <laughs> Tom, you should share about your smelling issue. It's not a smelling issue. It's that. Yeah, let's, let's hear what Tom Bomb has to say. Tom perspirates more than any individual I've ever met. I get really hot, okay, and I sweat. 
right? I, not that I, I don't smell. I just smell. Armpit check right now. Got, right. It's just leak. There's just quantities of, of liquid leak from my body. I know it, but, yeah, I spilled some beer, whatever, some under my arm. But, uh, yeah, I perspirate pretty, pretty more than often. And uh, I don't smell bad, though. I smell great. And see, that was the problem, is that the individual, it was, it was a gentleman, he was a front-end kind of leader at oh, no. Small Mart when I worked there years ago. So you can imagine how many people go in and out and, you know, you know think about, you know, you're uh, dealing with 12, 15 cashiers each day. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's a rough situation. Anytime you have to tell someone, seriously, if I had to go through it again, I'd rather fire someone's ass than have to tell someone who busts their ass for you. That they stink like shit. Yeah, that, that, that's got to be tough. Oh uh, shit, it's got to be a tough subject to broach. You know, no, really. I mean, it was like, you know, it was the worst thing. It's like my first day of ever becoming. I an think assistant. my connections effed up, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Joe's stuck in some trance. <laughs> I want to oh, suck so yo dick. I want to suck yo. Stream back up. Okay, well, he'll be here soon. I'm sure. I think it looks like it looks like uh, it looks like Jim also. Uh, no, that's fine. Well, what I was saying is that uh, you know, my first day of ever being an assistant in retail, I had to fire somebody, right and I'd rather fire somebody than have to tell somebody respect that they stink like shit. No, I had a boss once. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure it was not me. It was a serving job I had, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it was like one of those. Excuse me, Thomas. You're sweating in the food, and you're delivering that food to people, and they don't fucking like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. It's like one of you. I'm not gonna name names. Stinks pretty horribly. There's a thing called deodorant. You might want to look into that. That's how my boss approached it. <laughs> you might want to look into that. <laughs> this is a speed wow. stick. Like running up Fucking use it. Uh, it was at the racetrack. Yeah, I don't have to surf. He still looks like he's fucking...